Greetings and welcome back to Making the Mix, uh, part three, where we start bringing in the bass and sort of try to get the low end sort of figured out with a lot of our low end information. I've also got some percussion stuff that I want to add into the mix. So the nature of this tune, I really I do want to kind of have a great foundation set for my drums, my bass, sort of have an understanding of what that's going to be doing before I bring the vocal in. And then I'm going to bring the rest of the instruments in and around the vocal once I've set that into the whole situation. So I've done a few things off camera in the meantime. Uh, so let's look at, we're, we're still, a, we've sort of left it in drum mode. And if we look at the drum tracks over here, as you can see, I still have my kick and my snare, just regular. I haven't gated these. They're just still pretty much um, there unadorned. I've got my kick and my snare duplicates, which are feeding a drum compressor and I, as you may recall, I went ahead and uh, sort of physically gated all of those when we did a thing. And, oh, I, and I learned a cool trick I'm going to show you guys here in a minute uh, about that. Um, then we also did a, the, the rack and the floor. And the floor, we um, isolated all the tom-toms, and then we've, we consolidated all these tracks. We've got the crap mic. We're opening the crap mic with the snare using, um, well, actually, let's go to the other page and have a look at this properly here, shall we? I think we should. Okay, so looking here, this is what we got, our kick and our snare, regular. We've got EQ. Um, I went ahead and put a little compressor on this snare, just a little bit on the top, because I started noticing that the, comp uh, that the snares were um, maybe not super even, so I decided I did a little bit of light compression off the top of that to sort of get things to even out. So I added that since you were here. Uh, here's my kick and snare duplicates that we made that feed our drum compressor over here. Uh, and these, um, as you can see, we get the snare key from that that's opening up the crap mic on this. This is our snare key. We've, we're doing a side chain event here. We've got a side chain on over here. We've queued it into the side chain. We made it, the bus that we made for that. So the, the snare is now that, sorry, that snare is now opening the crap mic, as you may recall. We've got our, our, our three tom toms, which we've panned out. Uh, we have those going to a compressor of their own and a reverb. They're all, uh, all these are going to the reverb. I have a drum reverb for all these things. We have our overhead. Uh, we put a little bit of a, a Fairchild on that. That's nice. We've got our room mics. We haven't compressed those, but we did EQ them a little bit. And then we got a compressor and stuff like that. So let's uh, let me do one thing. Let's just listen to this drum track, and I'm going to take out some of the compressors so you can sort of hear where we left this thing a little bit. We'll start from the top here. And we'll mo mostly listen to the Samsara part. Okay. Ooh. Hey, what happened? No, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to take out the tom compressor and the drum compressor. I'm sorry, the drum compressor too. So let me add back in the drum compressor. See what it does for the kick and the snare. And I'm going to add back in the tom-tom the compressor. You can see the tom-toms just open right up. And we get a big tone on those now. So the compressors are really helping us a lot. Here's our, our reverb. Just getting the snare and the and the tom toms into that, we can probably get some more out of that later. I'm not gonna I'm as I I'm not gonna worry too much about the reverb bit until I start getting other instruments in and I, I decide what kind of a how much of that I'm gonna need. So I'm kind of holding my powder dry on the reverb right now, still a little bit. So a couple things. Um, I also want to uh, point out that I did while we were off camera. Let's get back over here. You may notice that a lot of these levels have been lowered. All my clip gains over here, you see minus 15, minus 13, minus 11. I've been given haircuts across the board pretty much a couple times because I really wanted to keep my mix level from getting into the red. And I don't even have any other instruments in yet. So I want good levels here. I don't even want to get close to the red can see I may still have to pull some stuff down because I don't um, we, we haven't even added in all this other stuff yet but the truth is, is that we're also going to want a lot of our stuff to sort of be back behind the transients of the drums we want the drums to sort of push the mix 
And so we're going to find ourselves adding these things underneath of those transients that are being apparent there. Still, we got to give ourselves headroom. And I still insist that we want to give ourselves as much headroom as we can on clip gain, not on the faders. We're going to get to the faders. We're going to automate faders. Don't worry about it. We'll fade. But right now, we want to stick with clip gain. Okay, so the other thing I did, a couple more things I want to show, to, show you I did. I went ahead and stuck a stereo bus compressor across the sub mix just for now because I want to kind of just, again, I don't want to see any red stuff over here. So I, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little limiting across the board. So let's see what that looks like real quick. As you can see this line, the blue line up here, it's only going to knock down when, uh, when the snare drum really knocks it. I've got my true peak ceiling down a bit, about 0 .40, ah, 0 0.4 dB. Here, let me see. What, let me show you what happens if I pull this down more. Look at the blue line at the top. Right, as you can see, now I'm starting to get some dips. That's also adding a lot of tone to everything, really. It's sort of. Bypass it. Bring it back. So you can see this maximizer is going to be just basically riding and giving and hitting pretty much limiting things. I'm squashing the threshold a bit and I'm making sure that my, my ceiling is good here. So we're just going to let that sort of sit there and sort of catch it. As we start to fill things up, that's going to maybe get too full at some point. And we're going to have to come back and maybe bring the levels down again. Uh, this is an iterative process. That's the thing about mixing is you're always making, you make one change and then that causes you to go back and maybe make a change from something earlier you did. Uh, that's just how it works, folks. That's mixing. So these light blue guys, I've got four tracks here. So I've made a ver reverb for that. Uh, I, I went ahead and assigned this studio reverb, which is nothing fancy. I don't know what it's going to sound like yet, but I've got a medium theater. I got a feeling I'm going to want something big. We'll see what, what happens. I'm going to make some adjustments as we go with that. Uh, but I, I just wanted to be there so I can start. If I decided that I want some reverb, I've got it ready to go. Okay, so that's there. I've also assigned sends to all of these from the percussion, and they're not feeding it yet. They're just ready to go. Also, take note that I've got them in FMP mode, so that way when I do start to do any adjustment with the, the panning over here, that's reflected in what's going to be sent to my reverb. Because if I'm over to the left, I might want that into the reverb to the left. Now I might not. I might change my mind, but just for starters, that's where I'm going to have it start. Uh, rather than have everything go into the reverb up the middle. So FMP, this little button right here, that sort of allows us to do that. I don't really need these in pre mode because uh, unless I want to solo up my reverb, in which case I may do that later and these might go into pre fader mode in a minute. But for now, no, don't need to do that. So we'll leave those alone. So I've got some, I got my levels under control. Uh, I feel like I can start adding some more tones of things. I can start adding some stuff into the mix. Also today, uh, I'm monitoring on speakers because the reason why I'm monitoring on speakers is because we're doing low end. And low end, um, it's just really hard to, to tune it in on headphones. I'm sorry. It just is. Uh, it's, it's something that you really have to hear the frequencies bouncing around the room a bit um, and sort of just hear them in the environment because a lot of times with low end, you're, you're actually sort of trying to control the way that the mix sort of hits the air in front of you. It's sort of, it's, when you listen to the low end, it's not so much you're hearing about feeling it and sort of tuning it in to the feeling of the, of the low end. So the problem that I have is that I don't have a very good low end sort of ascertaining environment in my home studio. I just don't. Uh, it's one of the problems with my place. Uh, although I'm, I've tuned myself to it, there's some definite resonances in my desk I have to worry about. Um, I would rather actually do this. I may actually do the last few of these videos over in the studio so I can um, have a better, finely, more finely tuned low end. But I'm going to do the best I can with what I got here. And at least sort of il illustrate to you folks, you know, what, what goes into trying to make this happen. I may not perfectly succeed in getting the low end perfect on this tune here in my house, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. There's another thing I need to stress about doing this. When you are monitoring on speakers, and this is true when you're monitoring on headphones too. When you're monitoring in these environments, 
you need to try to do your very best to stay at a consistent monitoring level. And I'm going to be stressing this over several classes and the reasons why that is. There are several reasons, but the main reason is when you listen to music at different levels, the EQ structures are different. What you're hearing the EQ wise are different at different levels. So when you start changing the levels of things, you, what you're going to start doing is changing EQ structures. And then when you bring it back up to a higher level, it's not going to be right again. It's what we're trying to do is find a happy medium. Really important to try to sort of find a comfortable level where you can hear everything at and be able to um, and not get too fatigued. You don't want it too loud either. So the general range that we're looking at is usually between 70 to 85 uh, dB SPL. So I've got my little DBSPL meter here, and I'm gonna just sort of see what I've got just right now with the drums in this environment. That's the level I wanna listen at. And I'm at the high side of 80, 85. Let me bring it down just a little bit. So yeah, I'm getting about that. It's a little bit loud, but I, again, I want to be able to, I'm doing low end, so I really want to feel what's happening and get a real sense of what the speakers are pushing out. So anyways, I've, I've decided on a good level that I feel comfortable with that I can just sort of monitor at. A little, it's a little loud but not, that's not gonna kill me, okay? Here's another thing that I also went ahead and did that I didn't mention. If you look over here, let me move myself over. Over here, I went ahead and put a reference track in so I can every now and then listen to a track that I know of that I like that's kinda got some elements of what uh, I might need to hear for this. Let me show you what I got here. I've got a song called Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead. I'm gonna play a little bit of this so you can hear what, uh, what's going on with that. It's this down here. So anyways, that's got a nice big fat snare, it's got some big tom-toms, it's got a great guitar sound to it, it's got a really good vocal sound. Um, it's also mastered, it's mixed and mastered. So yeah, I, one of the things about doing reference listening is that you are referencing yourself to uh, something that's been mastered. And so uh, you have to sort of keep that in mind. Your mix is not mastered yet. Uh, it hasn't been given the extra gloss, the sheen and stuff, and the extra treatment, extra compression. So when you do reference listening, you sort of, it's more about just really general, just to see if you're in the ballpark with general things. So anyways, I've got that ready to go. I sort of listened to this before I started this process just to sort of get my head to hear what my system was gonna sound like, what to expect, you know, from something that I really liked. So I always, ref I always um, recommend listening to something reference-wise, especially when doing low-end, just to get your head in the game. All right, so I've done that. Let's go ahead back up here. And we're doing, the, the, we're doing these light blue guys right now. So let's zoom in. And these are on the Samsara section. And so it looks like I have this sort of a sequence of things. I got four different events. And you know what? Let's just sort of let's, let's solo this up and see what's happening with this. Uh, actually, let's go back over to here and open up the percussion and we'll close out the drums for just a second. I got a big low end bomb here and there's whoops here. So there's a lot of low end information involved with this. I may have to do some sculpting with that. Okay, so let's just, and let's, let's sort of hear that in context with the, with the rest of the drums. Now I went ahead actually earlier and I did sort of do some level adjusting with these 
and I sort of brought these guys down to you can see that my uh, clip gain levels over here um, are pretty you know minus 12 minus 12 minus 12 minus 16 I sort of went so the levels are pretty well adjusted there's a bunch of low-end information there I'm, I'm I kind of want to hang on to it as long as I can I'm gonna sort of see how far I can take that before it starts bugging me because um, at some point I am going to probably uh, compress the low end of this mix and sort of hold some of this stuff in a little better but I kind of like this big boom here that goes by I'm kind of liking that without any reverb right now too it's not I don't feel the need to have those reverb it sounds like they're just sort of part and parcel with the the drum track so let's sort of keep those in there like that just for now I feel like that's kind of a good sort of starting level for the, everybody there we, we may feel otherwise once we get the bass in. That's the thing I'm most concerned about because once I get the bass into the picture, then we may have some different things to worry about. So let's look at the bass. Okay, once again, for our bass, we have two tracks here um, that are for in the Samsara section, and we have one track for this other section. So obviously we have two different, well, three different bass sounds. Let's look at our bass sound here and sort of check out what we got. Um, Listen to over the Samsara section. Yeah, I feel like my low scoop drum up here. Let's pull that back a bit because I already feel like that's going to interfere with the bass. Let's I'm gonna get take that back some dBs here. There. Let's look at this uh this 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 low low bass thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a no zone on that and just see what's going. Oh, we got one on there. Let's see what it says here. So I got a little high pass filter here, taking us 33 down maybe, 30 down. But then again, we might want some more of this really nice tone here. Let's see if we can get this in the bell. Ooh, I'm liking that already. It's kind of like laying in there. Let's just find it. I wonder if I need to pull out a little bit of uh, stuff in this so I can make room for the other bass. Let's sort of have this sort of ready to go. And let's check the other bass. Let's put an ozone on it too. So let's get that EQ over there. I'm liking my ozones today. Oops, wrong one. Oh, let's say, hey, let's just let's give this one a try. What the heck? It's the vintage EQ. All right, let's see what we got here. All right.
making a little room for the other bass over here. Let's so I'm I'm also doing this a lot of this without soloing the bass. I'm trying to see if I can't lay it in, make some of these EQ decisions without soloing it. But I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna I'm breaking. I'm gonna check him out solo wise real quick. <laughs> I'm liking a little bit of that 1K boost on the on that upper bass. Let's check that out. Without it. With it. Let's start clearing it up a little bit. Right now there's a lot of preponderance of low end with both of those. But I'm just clearing a little bit of room here. Let's see how that sounds in the mix. Maybe a little bit more of the upper bass in comparison. So I'm going to pull back the octave 2 dB and bring up the bottom and up a dB. Let's see how that sounds. I'm going to bring back that bass back up a little bit, one more dB. Yeah, this is really bringing out the sort of wonkiness of the bass sound, and I'm digging it. I'm digging the sound quite a bit. I don't want to cut anything, though. I'm digging pretty much what I got. Uh, I feel like I've made room for the big boom now that's up here, the scoop drum. I feel like I have, everything's kind of living together. Uh, I still want to be able to test this on a bigger system a little bit later, but I'm going to try to just little by little get this all together. Now I'm going to go to this other section here, because now we haven't really looked at that too much, and I've got this other bass sound, and I want to... Let's get a good, um, let's get something up for that real quick too. So let's make sure it has a nice uh, EQ. And I'm going to go ahead and put a, a I'm going to go ahead and put a, a dime, some dynamics on it too. So let's put the EQ on it first. Again, let's use our lovely, lovely Ozone 9s. Those are fun. And we're going to put a compressor on this one. And we may, we may go back and compress the other ones. I didn't really notice a need for the compressor on that, on those. Although we could even them out more. I have a feeling I'm going to need it for this section, though. So let me just go ahead and get one ready to go. Uh, let's do, um, let's see, which one we got here? Let's just do a good basic comp a compressor. We'll use one of the, the waves for that. We'll, we'll, we'll address that in a minute. Okay, so let's go over here to our ozone, and let's check out the EQ of this bass in this section. I'm gonna do a little tiny, tiny, little high pass on this one. Because as you can see, once again, we got a lot of stuff happening over here. We don't need it. The bass presence is really nice on this sound. What's happening for me, though, is that uh, a couple things. I wanna get a little bit more aggressiveness from this tone a little bit. I know it's there, we'll sort of pull it, it's out of the mid range. But let's look at also real quick, let's look at this bass part. I'm gonna open this up a little bit and let's look at this a little more closely. Um, let's get in on this more closely. 
and we can notice something that our low notes have are of a certain level, but then the higher notes tend to be a little bit quieter. There's a lot of level changes, a lot of level differences with this bass part. And to, for my ear, I want to even that out a bit. I don't feel com quite comfortable with that. But first, let me go ahead and do some stuff with EQ real quick. And we're going to also keep this. We're not going to solo this. We're going to listen and try to do this EQ work without soloing at this point. <laughs> Yeah, so I really, really cranked up some 1,000. I found that there's, there's, there's a little bit of aggressiveness coming from the bass when I do that. A little bit of extra high end. Uh, and I'm not messing with the low end because I think we're getting plenty of nice low end from this. Now let's see what happens. And that, that's actually a pretty radical DB though. Let me maybe pull that back a little bit. I could probably not go that crazy. That little dirtiness that's in there, and I actually really like that. And that's bringing that out. That's something I'm going to be liking once I get all these other instruments, because that's one of the things we we know about bass that we learn about bass is that we'll get a great bass tone going in a mix. Sounds nice and warm and toasty, and it's got a nice high end, a nice low end. It's going great. We get it in the mix and it disappears. And so we find a lot of times for bass, what we want to do is we want to sort of get, a lot of times it's these nasty frequencies between 300 and, and 1K that we're pulling out of all these other instruments that really helps the bass sort of make its place in the mix. So you're going to find yourself actually, you know, bringing in the gnarlies with this and maybe even distorting the bass a little bit. I'll even, so many times, I may even do it on this one here in a bit. You, you never know. I may even put a sans amp or, a, or, a, or an amplifier across the bass or do a parallel amplifier with the bass so that I get this extra texture that helps the bass sort of sit in the mix a little better without having to just really crank it up. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. I like that. Let me do, uh, let's find a nice uh, compre let's compression setting for this now. Uh, here's my compressor. It's set at zero, one to one. I'm, I'm just going to basically rock that up to, let's say, at least, let's say three to one ratio. Okay, so the bass, let's, let's run the bass through that. <laughs> Operate just a little bit. So you can see what that's just doing is it's just making sure all the notes, I'm just sort of bringing it down a few dB, maybe between, I don't know, maybe, yeah, threshold is about 9 dB right now. So what's happening is, is it's just basically tickling it. Again, let's show again. You can see here. And it's just making sure that all the notes, all the bass notes end up being pretty much the same level. And it just sort of helps me level everything out so that those, and let's listen to the boom, 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 bang, doom, doom, boom, 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 When it goes up on the octaves, that's when, that's what we're trying to do is get those to come out more. Uh, so here, let's hear it without it. And here's with it. Let me 
to just make it do a little more work. I'm going to bring it back, the threshold down a bit more, and I'll bring the output up a little bit to com compensate for that. If you notice the fluctuations in the red zone over here on the compressor, that tells you how much difference that we're having to uh, how different these notes are in level from each other. So this is leveling out this section. This is going to help it rock out. And, this, and now we're, we're also hearing this nasty sort of uh, EQ that I put on the bass. At this point, I want to listen f uh, through the whole uh, beginning of this tune up until that section and just sort of see if the bass sort of carries across from one section to the next. So let's hear, uh, let's hear, actually let's hear near about the halfway point of this whole section. Okay, I'm also perceiving that on the, on like the rise ups, boom, 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 bumps that we're also, let me look at this bass part too. Let's, we have some level fluctuations here that we might find a little alarming. So on the walk-ups, especially these little four notes here, let's look at those. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. It feels like to me that we could level those out a little bit too. So I'm going to go ahead and, and it looks like the octave is pretty much always the same. I don't see any fluctuation in level so much with that, but my pure bass, let's go ahead and put another compressor across the pure bass. So again, uh, let's reach for a C1. Those are nice little waves guys. And let's set the ratio again at about, I don't know, three to one. Um, all right, so let's check this out. Let's hear this with this. It couldn't hurt to do that on this other one too. Let's just be safe and do it all across the board. Or I could actually do this on the bass master, but I'd rather not. I'd rather have more control here. So let's just comp on the big guy, the big fella too, the low fella. Set a ratio. That's the thing about these waves is you get to set the ratio first because nothing will happen if you don't. <clears throat> so there's some fluctuation there. I'm also trying to find that happy spot with the level of it where it's the tom toms riding on top of it but it's still the bass is still there so we're going to probably be tweaking that as we go a little bit further too all right so but I, that's helping a lot i think that's kind of helping the bass sort of set and when the, that's one of the things about bass is a lot of times different notes will pop out uh, a lot because most basses that's just the nature of a bass. A lot of basses, they don't, you know, graphite next bass, basses will generally have real even notes all the way across the board. But most basses have, you know, note, certain notes that are louder than others just by nature of the instrument can't help it. So let's listen to where we're at right now with everything um, before we go any further. And then what we're going to be doing on the next mix down uh, session is we're going to bring the vocals into the mix and sort of mix everything to the vocals. And we're going to do a bass, drums, vocals mix. And who knows, maybe we'll be done with this thing. Also, here's what, let's do a little house cleaning here too. I've got my kick and my um, snare duplicates here. And I'm just going to take these guys 
and I'm going to highlight them and look over here I'm going to just on these little dots over here I'm going to hide them so I don't have to see them I'm just no they're there they're good they're doing what their job is they're feeding the compressor uh, all that's working out great now I've got a nice sort of tidy situation with my drums here uh, my levels are looking good I've got good levels I haven't had any red stuff in the mix land for a while Mac makes me happy so I feel like I'm making progress I checked it with my reference mix and I kind of liked where I'm going with it although I know it doesn't sound like the reference mix yet to be perfectly honest with you uh, I'm going to be probably tuning this low end a little bit as we go I mean as we go I'm gonna sort of feel like certain things are popping out but in my environment right now I'm, I'm be curious to know what, how it sounds in your environment feels like a lot of stuff is pretty coherent on the low end still could use a little tweaking but for the most part it's kind of working for me right now if I can build from this so um, but anyways if you hear it on your system uh, shoot me a line and let me know what you think uh, is 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 happening with the low end with stuff right now so I'm gonna play it one more time uh, the first two sections and just just we'll just uh, this is most mostly for a reference listen so here you go enjoy Yeah, it's coming together. I'm going to a little more high end on that bass in that second section. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, maybe I was a little too crazy with 1K, and I feel like it's more around 7, uh, 800 for that frequency. One thing that I'm definitely thinking about doing, and I'll uh, we'll be doing in further takes here, is I'm pretty sure I want to have a completely different reverb for the its real section. And so when we come back on our next video, I may already have that ready for you. Just so there's, I want, I'm deciding that I want a contrast and feeling between those sections um, in terms of the air around the drums. Uh, and I hope you agree with me. Anyways, this, is, this concludes uh, the base part of making the mix, and I'll see you folks shortly.